Good evening and welcome to the X-Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City where courageous people come forward and share their journey from the religion of Mormonism to a saving personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm your host Bishop Earl and I thank God for this opportunity and I thank the volunteers who spend many hours making this possible. I was a Latter-day Saint for over 60 years and I have a great love for the LDS people. And as I said before, we know that there are many Latter-day Saints, faithful ones, who are questioning and even leaving the church over church doctrine, doctrinal problems or maybe because of church history. But some of them can't keep the commandments and they feel guilty and unworthy. And there are those that don't feel like they can do enough or ever be enough or don't fit in. And I, but I pray tonight that the message that we have for you tonight will uh, touch your heart soften your heart and maybe you'll uh, feel something and learn something about those that have, have made such a journey. And it is a joyous journey, a hope in Christ. Let's pray. Dear Father, we ask for your help tonight, that your Spirit will be with us, that the things that are said will be of your will and it will touch hearts and people's minds and hearts will be open to your message, that they may come to you and realize they, they need you in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're grateful tonight to have Nicole Beaton. We appreciate you coming down from the north and yeah, coming down me. here and being here. Uh, you were raised, uh, born into the church, right? Oh, yes. You're yeah. a young lady, so you mm -hmm. haven't... Uh, so how long were you in the church? Uh, well, I guess 26 years, technically. I'm 27 now. Oh, But, okay. yeah, so my whole life and, okay. I mean... So born and raised in the church, yes. tell us, I know your family's active, your mother, yeah. mother went on a mission. And yeah, my, well it's kind of, my dad, <clears throat> my mom and my dad actually were divorced when I was two. Oh. My mom, mom, she went on a mission though, and after the divorce she, she went and acted, but I grew up with my dad. And then he got remarried okay. and, and okay. all that, so yeah. yeah, very active. In fact, my dad's, I think, great, 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 great grandpa, he was, he was a bodyguard of Brigham Young, and wow. he actually, he guarded his grave, and that was a that was his death. He actually died guarding his grave. So, I mean, it, it goes way back. Wow. <laughs> so, this was Brigham Young's grave? Brigham Young, yeah. Oh, and yeah. That, was, that was here in Salt Lake, I guess, yeah. he was buried. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, uh, so, tell us just a little bit about, you went to seminary and yep. had those experiences? Yep. and went to church every Sunday, went to seminary. I went to institute when I graduated high school and did all that. And, yeah. Yeah, so, and you believed it. Somewhere along the way, you fell in love. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I don't know man. if it's just because, oh, oh, I think you meant the church, I was like. <laughs> oh, no, well, that yeah. too. Yeah, in, in high school, yeah, my, we grew up in, well, I didn't grow up in Malad, but I went to, to high school in Malad, Idaho, and he was my neighbor, even though we lived a mile apart, but yeah. anyway, so, yeah, we started dating and fell in love, and he went on a mission. He went on a mission, you waited, waited for him, him. yeah. 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 Now, during your growing up years, you had a testimony of the church, I guess. You yeah. were active. It was part of your culture and yeah. your family. Yeah, was all I knew. How it. did you feel about Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon? I, I mean, I remember my dad, you know, he'd always read the Book of Mormon and say, how could somebody just make this up? I'm like, I know. You know, yeah. I just thought it was just this incredible book. And, and, I mean, the church, I mean, that was the only thing I knew. It was true. I was raising it. And I love my dad. And, I mean, I just, you know, I just... That there was nothing else, you know. So and, I just, and you didn't even probably ever even think about anything else. No, I, mean, I didn't. Mm -hmm, and the prophets, you trusted them. Yeah, and oh loved yeah. Loved them. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. Any any problems during your growing up years that ever struck you funny or? Oh yeah. Made you think? <laughs> well, what? yeah. Um, polygamy definitely was was a really hard one for me. I, um, I mean, my sister and I would kind of talk about it a little bit, and and I remember going to seminary. And my seminary teacher was talking about it, and it kind of bugged me when her and I were talking about it, but I didn't know how real it was, you know. And he started talking about it, and I, in a way, I, I, I went to go talk to him and asked him. I was like, I just don't understand this polygamy thing. I, you know, what, how can you explain that? And he's like, well, Nicole, you know God's a polygamist. So he's like, how do you explain all the other, you know, races? And anyway, I just cried, and I just, I couldn't, it just, it just, I knew it wasn't right, but I just thought, something's wrong there. Maybe something's wrong with me, but it was never... Well, the church isn't true then. It was just something either wrong with me that. or something. I just I'm not grasping this, but it it just really took a toll on me. And 
You know, I've actually never really thought this through much. I don't know what the LDS would, listening might think of this as I say it, and I'll see how it comes out. But uh, when you say that about G uh, God having multiple wives, mm -hmm. and that's where the races came from, and I do think that's kind of the, the consensus of things out there in the LDS mm -hmm. world, does that mean that he had a, an Asian wife and a black wife and a... According to what my, I mean, I don't know. What he According said, to what anyway. my seminary teacher said. And, and I didn't, I thought maybe this guy was just misled, but, you know, he's a leader. And so, yeah. and anyway, come to find out that that's, <laughs> it is in the doctrine that he's going to you know, multiple wives, or from what I read, you know, and all that. So Institute, yeah. any questions ever come up at Institute uh, that, other really. than polygamy? I, and, and I didn't go for a long time. Yeah. I, you know, I went and, and so, but nothing, I just, yeah, nothing really okay. came up that, so husband so, comes home from his mission, yeah. and then what happens? We get married. Get married? Well, a few months, yeah. And where did you get married? Salt Lake Temple. In the Salt Lake Temple. Mm -hmm, Came mm -hmm. down here and got married in the temple. Mm -hmm. How was that? Had you been through the temple before no. he came home? No. What was that experience like? It was different. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I, yeah, it was it, definitely not spiritual. I, I wasn't I, spiritual. No, it wasn't spiritual for me. I mean, I remember just being happy, seeing just that my family was happy for me. And so I remember just feeling that, but as far as it just didn't, it, yeah, it, it was, it, it wasn't what I was hoping for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that's that been a common thread, actually, people mm -hmm. that go through the temple. And uh, now looking back on it, I actually believe it's because we are hopefully spiritual people mm -hmm. and going into the temple, it's, it's Masonic, it's yeah. occultish, mm -hmm. uh, the all-seeing eye. There's just so yeah. many things in there that I think it may be our sensitivity to the spirit that's trying to say to us, guys, this something's isn't exact. Wrong. yeah, something's mm -hmm. wrong. So you kind of felt that too. Yeah, and that's how, and you know, and I didn't know that it was, you know, derived from masonry and, and all that with Joseph Smith. Yeah, I didn't know that Until either. later, and, you yeah. know, when I was doing my research and I just blew my mind, I was... I mean, I just, I couldn't believe that. I mean, word for word, I mean, it just, I, but it made sense. You know, it made sense. Okay, that's why I was feeling that way because, you know, it, it just, anyway, it's yeah, incredible. And it was always struck me that the Kirtland Temple uh, was built in 1836 and there mm -hmm. was nothing of the, well, some rituals, but nothing of the uh, marriage for time and mm -hmm. all eternity, none of the rich uh, yeah, ceremonies and all that, the yeah. endowment. Not yeah. until the Joseph Smith joined the Masons and then yeah. it became part of the Nauvoo Temple. Yeah. Well, anyway, so you get married in the temple mm -hmm. and your husband, of course, you're active as young Latter-day Saints yeah. married and uh, everything going normal. Yeah, and going, along. going normal and just the, you know. Just living life. Just and living life. I, school and work I, and just, stuff. And mm -hmm. along, came, come, along comes Kayla, yeah. your little daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell t what. So what kind of started making you think again more about um, the church? Well, especially after after I got married, I was really struggling with polygamy because I knew it was still a doctrine in the church, and and here I'm married and you know in love with this man, and I I just you know just couldn't get past you know thinking that maybe I have to share him, and I mean these thoughts are real to women. I mean really, even if you're not you know, in the polygamous groups, you know, women, they really have these thoughts going through their head. and Well, you do have to deal with it, yeah. right? I mean, you have mm -hmm. to think about it in the sense of, you know, what it's if? there. Yeah, yeah, it's there, and it, it just, and so, you know, it continued to bother me, and um, anyway, so that continued to bother me, and then we had Kayla, my little girl, uh -huh. and um, my sister has two girls as well, and me and my sister are really close, and her and I were both just having this issue with how are we going to teach our precious little girls, that this is something from God, because I know they're going to question us, and it just was really, um, just really getting to us, and um, anyway, it, it just, it struck us to do more research, and, you know, read some books, and just see, you know, let's see if we can find an answer for this, and, and then you start trying to find answers, and you start, it's That's kind of... That's a dangerous, <laughs> uh, dangerous thing to do, Yeah, you it? start... Open a book. Oh, it's, man, it means... it's just, the polygamy is just the tip of the iceberg, and then it just... That's not. That's the least of my worries now. With that. So. <laughs> what yeah. What other things did you run into just oh, quickly? Um, the blood atonement. You know, it bring me untaught. You know, the apostates or, um, you know, people that were adulterers or whatever to slit their throats. I mean, it's graphic. The journal yeah. discourse is. It's. Yeah. I mean, it blew me away. And um, I mean, I the Adam God doctrine. Yeah. Um, there's so many. There's so many different things. Yeah. But I mean. But now the the main thing that bothers me is just their their false doctrine on who Jesus is and his true gospel and 
that just, I mean, I just, I can't. We're running into, okay. I'm running into this all the time. Mm -hmm. So explain a little bit, what was your testimony of Jesus and maybe the Bible as a Latter-day Saint? I always loved Jesus. I mean, I just, I, I loved him and I didn't know who he was. I thought I did. I thought he was my, my older, older brother, brother that was valiant. He stepped and up that, in the first, in the pre-existence Yeah, he's going to help take... me out and, um, but I always had this connection with him um, and Sorry, what was your other, the other well, part of that? Well, just the Bible, too, but oh, the Bible, just your the, testimony, mm -hmm. I mean, because when you talk to a Latter-day Saint, they say, well, I believe in Jesus, I yeah. love, I, I believe in the Bible, mm -hmm. but more particularly, we're talking about Jesus, but, uh, so he's my Savior, uh -huh. so what? It's so, it's so drastically different. The, so, I mean, as a, as a Mormon, the Bible, I believed in it, but it was corrupted, yeah. and so I didn't, in fact, yeah. I didn't really want to read it, because... I really didn't want my parents even watching me, I mean, you know, read the Bible because I should be reading the Book of Mormon, you know. Yeah. And so, um, you know, when the Latter-day Saint says that, it, it, now it's incredible to me because every single doctrine in the LDS Church is, is completely different than what's in the Bible. I mean, there's, there's a spin on everything. It's just, it, it's crazy. And so you, you can't, you can't believe in the Gospel of Joseph Smith. <laughs> and believe, you can't and believe in them. I'm really contextually in the you Bible. You really and, can't. Yeah. And now I realize that, but you don't know that when you're LDS. You just, you just, you know, listen to what they tell you, and yeah. you don't realize until you, your eyes are open, and then it's just this amazing, beautiful book. And well, you know. we we used to always pull out different scriptures, you know, to uh, explain Mormon doctrine, mm -hmm. but they were just the scripture. Just the one You never verse. took it out of context, yeah, or yeah. never took it in context. Mm -hmm. You never really understood who who was talking to whom mm -mm. or whatever. Yeah. It just sounds good, so just throw it out there. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. The, the, the sticks of Joseph and, oh, and yeah. uh, Judah and so There's on. There's nothing to do with it. Baptism for the dead and all those yeah. different... I, I, so you were mentioning how, how Jesus has changed for you uh, as a Christian. Oh my goodness, yes. Why isn't it that the LDS, I mean, it, there is a blindness. Would you agree with oh, that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's. I think I heard on Sean's show one time. It's almost like a, like an addict. Like you don't realize. You know, you're. It's like this addiction that you have, and you're just so blind to it. And you, you just. You can't let it go. And you, yeah, it's just they're they're so blinded. It's it's so hard to. And that's <laughs> the problem with that religion is that. And then I guess that's the definition of being deceived is, you, I mean, you don't know that you're being deceived. And so it... it yeah, if you knew you were being deceived, you'd walk away you from that. you wouldn't be deceived anymore. But the reason <laughs> that deception is so powerful is that it, it, it clouds your thinking. And, mm -hmm. and like they always say, uh, the church does your thinking for you, yeah. basically. And, mm -hmm. and you just kind of go along. And, and it's interesting when the church gives an explanation for something. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, well, gosh... That makes, I mean, that doesn't always make sense, but yeah. well, I, I'll trust but that it I'll goes understand along with, that. Yeah, and yeah. I was there, and so, and I don't, I don't mean it in a, a bad way saying they're blind. I don't, I don't mean it badly or anything, because I was there, and I, I know what that feeling is like, and it's just, I just, anyway, I. I but just you feel don't fine, really feel know fine. it until you're. Until you're out. Uh, yeah, out I didn't know when I was back, in. And mm -hmm. that's what's kind of interesting, yeah. isn't mm -hmm. it? So tell us a little bit about your husband at this point. Is he, uh, now are you questioning anyone yeah. about the church? Are you yeah. talking to anybody? Well, I'm talking, you know, my, my sister, of course, and mm -hmm. don't really feel comfortable what know, she approaching think? my parents at this point. What she she's, saying? Uh, well, she's on board with me. She, she oh, in good. fact, she's the first one to let, you know, kind my dad know that I'm, and... you know, and so it just kind of, so her and I were talking and, you know, I told my husband, Kate, you know, Aubrey's not going to, they had a, a new baby, a little girl, you know, and I just said, she's not going to bless her new little girl. And he was just irate. Your my husband? husband. Yeah. Oh. He just, how could she do that? And I just, I can't, you know, I don't understand that. And I was like, well, she doesn't believe in it. And he, you know, I mean, that's why she doesn't want to baptize her into it. And he was really, really upset. And, um, him and I, you know, I, I was really questioning and, it got to the point where we couldn't even talk about it anymore because it just it made him so You mad. couldn't talk to yeah, Kate, he just, ab Kate about it. Mm -hmm, it made him so upset. and um, So anyway, it got to that point where well, we it, just can't talk about religion anymore. Yeah. He know. still had, obviously, a strong testimony. Oh, yeah. He returned missionary. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. He really just thought felt. it was this, you know, he knew everything. I didn't know anything. But anyway, so finally he just, it took a while, and I just put my trust in God and Literally, that's all. That's all. I, I just, I thought, okay, I'm not going to talk to him anymore, and I'm just going to trust in God and whatever happens. And um, I was reading this book 
uh, Joe Smith Rough Stone Rolling, and he started asking me, so what's in there, you know, and kind of, so I was telling him, you know, well, and I, just all these things that I find, I'm like, yeah, did you know that Joe Smith was married and married women, and he was like, no way, you know, yeah. all these things, and he drank 14 alcohol. 14-year-olds. and Yeah, and 14-year-olds, yeah. and he was, you know, drinking, and, and just little things here and there, and it just, he just started, you know, realizing it, you know, he started doing his own research, and, you know, realizing that the facts are there, you know, he, I wasn't just saying the, the things I, I, weren't, I wasn't lying about them, and he just yeah. couldn't, and he's a truth seeker, I mean, he's, you know, and so the, the facts were there, and, and. So you're saying Cade's. Uh, he's on board, yeah, oh. and, and on board with, with <laughs> Jesus, and everyone, I mean, it, it's awesome, it just, it, yeah, the, the amazing, things you're talking so. about, we don't talk about in Sunday school very often, nah. do we? No. <laughs> things that get brought up. Yeah. And when they do get brought up, um, like this papyri for Abraham or the, mm -hmm. the black skin and mm -hmm. all uh, the, the curse on the, the blacks and so on, then, then the church comes into a spin mode and try to explain things yeah. away and try mm -hmm. to kind of make it seem like it really wasn't that big a deal yeah. or that person that spoke about it wasn't really speaking for the church. Mm -hmm. And yet we know... Mm -hmm. What we know, we, we know what we're taught. Yep. We know what the consensus of the of the of knowledge is. So it's, I was just gonna say, with you know, I when doing my research, I want to look at both sides of it to get a fair. Did you? You know, so I did, and you know, at the fair LDS dot org, and it was bad. I mean, uh, the the way that they spin everything, and it just it just they wouldn't even answer the question. I mean, it, it was it's just crazy how because, I and mean, I guess that's what happens. You know, the truth that they just they don't have the answers and. So I think it almost makes it worse when they have people that are trying to defend it and yeah, and st anyway, and coming so. up with some strange answers. Yeah, very well, how did your answers. your folks then were pretty upset? Yeah, and, yeah, it's it was really really hard. Has that still been hard? And um, it's getting better. It's definitely still. I I think at this point it's, um, I they probably would argue with me, but it might be more hard for me just to, just to sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I was gonna not cry, but just to see my family. Sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah, I, just want, I just love them so much, and I just I just want them to know the truth. Like, I just, I mean, this is why I'm here. I mean, just for anybody, even if it's not my family. I just I just have this deep desire to to bring the truth out and just to, to have people know who Jesus is because it'll change their life. And I just look at my family, and I just... I just feel for them, and my love for them has grown so much, even though they, I know they think opposite, which is probably so crazy for them that they heard me say that, but I just, um, well, we do it's have hard. A love. We have yeah. a love for them and, and for God, and, and I guess it's just looking at it, at it just a little differently. We have this great love for Jesus, and we want to share that freedom, and they're, yeah. they're in bondage. Yes. And mm -hmm. so you're not really able to talk to them no, much about no, it. No, it's I we've tried, but it's yeah. ended bad. And you know, and I've um, me and my dad are talking a lot more now. And I'm I'm hoping that I kind of <laughs> just keep on talking about Jesus, you know. And I, I mean, as much as I can, it's it's never been easy for me just to be real open with my dad. But um, sure, that's just hoping that God hard. will give me strength. <laughs> yeah, just to show him my I guess my zeal, because yeah. I, I, anything I say against the church, it just it makes it worse. Yeah. You know, I think with most people, and so. Yeah. Well, you can't argue people into the church or out of the church, mm -hmm. I don't think. And I think the fact that you mm -hmm. use uh, the example you used with Kate is just trusting yeah, in God. Yes. And, you know, even if, if these people uh, don't hear it from you, it may be from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like you may be touching someone else's family member tonight. And, and just them, having them realize that if they just open the Bible yes. and trust God's word, and realize that the Mormon church is a gospel of Joseph Smith, yeah, as you said. It is. It's, that it's just a... And it's so easy to find if you just, if you're willing to just say, God, show me your truth and, you know, open my eyes. It's, it's just, everything's right there. I mean, God has yeah. made it so easily accessible for us to find his truth. And all you need to do is just um, trust in him and just have that, that open mind and heart. You know. And one of the challenges, I think, of leaving the church is that because it is the only true church, you kind yeah. of wonder, well, what do I do now? Where do I go? Yes. What, uh, mm -hmm. What's next? You know, you almost feel, and some people actually kind of drop off the edge for years yeah. before they find Christ. You were able to, to how, how did you make that well, little transition? You know, when I found out um, the church was a lie and false, I was mad, and you know, you're that's your only truth growing up. I mean, that's what you're raised into. That's all you know. That's all you know about God. That's yeah. it. That's it. And so 
I really was leaning towards being atheist. Really, I just, I just was, because I didn't know. I, you know, I thought, well, that's God, yeah. and that's not true. So, so it's over. <laughs> um, yeah, but but praise God for people like you and Sean, and you know, because um, my husband, you know, we were doing some more research, and he ran into to one of Sean's episodes, and he's kind of debating. Uh, you know, a Mormon, and I was like, oh, this guy's right on, you know, yes, and, you know, we were getting a kick out of it, and at this point, I, I really was like, God, eh. but, but, even though I felt the way about God, I still love Jesus, I still thought, Jesus is awesome, he's a, he's a good guy, but, because I didn't know who he was, but, yeah, anyway, um, so it just, we started watching more of Sean's, ep- just clips of him, and then I started watching the full episodes, and realizing, you know, his true message is trying to help people just come to Christ and yeah. don't trust and know me. him and don't believe me. Don't Look, believe me. Open and, a book. Yeah, and I just come to Christ. Anyway, I just started reading reading the Bible and just uh the New Testament. It just I mean it it just was a completely different meaning for me. It just yeah. those words and I mean What did the Bible mean to you as a Latter day Saint? It really Honestly, it didn't mean anything. It really, because I just, it was, I just felt like it was so corrupted and kind of don't, just not you know, don't really, correctly. yeah. And, and, and so I didn't, a, I just thought it was this book that you can't understand. It's so hard to read. And, and now it's just, it's so amazing because it's, I mean, the Old Testament and the New Testament, it all goes together contextually and it's all, it's all about Jesus. The whole thing, it just, every single thing, it, it's prophesied of him or it's a shadow of him or, and so every time I read the Old Testament, I can just see it, it's just it's it's amazing now. It it's really all, Old Testament points to Christ. Yeah, it's in the and the New Testament. Uh, New Testament. Back. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's, oh, that's great. Well, so so you tell us a little bit about your first time going to a Christian church. Well, the first time I went was actually um, I was with my sister in tech in Austin, Texas, and um, and it was amazing. I mean, I I walked in there and they just they started playing the music and it was all about. Jesus and isn't that so different? Yeah, it's so. I would love to have every LDS person walk into a, a church yeah. with the music and the words up mm-hmm. on the screen and, and read those him. words and praising God. Praising God, it's just so unique. It's very, and it just it was, anyway. It was a just incredible, and the, just the whole message. And because I, I really, as a, as a Mormon, I, you know, going to the meetings that, you know, on Sunday, it just, it, I didn't feel uplifted, I didn't feel edified, and I was always, I mean, even when I was younger, I'm like, man, I just want to hear more about Jesus, and when they did do something about, about him, I, I loved it, and I wanted to listen, and I was all ears, and it just, it seemed like that was um, lacking. Would you say the LDS would say to you that you missed something? I don't... Uh, that you missed their message? Probably, is, they'll say whatever they want. Yeah, they can say <laughs> they what can. they want. I mean, uh, I, I know what I'm saying. I know that's very challenging yeah. to both of us because I'm I sure was in it for 60 that. years, 60 mm-hmm. plus years, and I guess I missed the message because I sure didn't ever sense it. I mean, I had mm-hmm. a love for Jesus. In fact, I think I've kind of said this maybe tongue in cheek, but I think I had a pride mm-hmm. that I knew Jesus. I wasn't even looking for for a relationship yeah. with Jesus. I didn't know I didn't have it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> until I mm-hmm. ended up having it. So Exactly. So mm-hmm. so the worship is different and you enjoyed the music in yeah, Texas I love, and is it similar I here it. in Utah? Yeah, it's and I just I can't wait. I mean I, I seriously I can't wait for Sunday to roll around and I, whenever it's over I'm like, Oh man, you know, I <laughs> wish it was longer now and it's just it's completely changed and it's just and it, and it, what's so amazing is that they take one verse and you learn so many different things about this one verse, you know, just contextually and just all the different meanings in it. And it's just, it's just, anyway, it's awesome. It's I love a joy, it. isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And talk a little bit about uh, the burden off the shoulders kind of thing. Oh, the, my goodness. The feeling that you have, uh, the freedom. Yeah. Um, I can't, it's amazing. It's there though, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. It, it, or lit- not it, it, it No, <laughs> liter- it literally feels like a weight has been lifted off and I just, um, just every day I just it's it's all about Jesus and trusting in him and it's his righteousness not mine it's you know my righteousness comes through faith in him and and it's all about him and just praising him and it's it's amazing and I you know because you just you can't work for your salvation you never can be good enough 
And if you could, then we wouldn't need Jesus yeah. to come down and do it for us. So. Well, let's talk a little bit more about works and grace, because okay. that is a significant difference between yes. the LDS, and mm -hmm. you mentioned it. And that's what does put us under a burden, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And put us under a, the yoke of bondage, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference for you? Um, it's what do you sense? The difference is that now um, when, I, when I do... When I do good, it's, it's because of my love for Jesus. And it's because of what he did for me on the cross. And just his unfailing love for... Sorry, I'm really not a ball baby normally. Um, just for all, I mean, just for everybody. I mean, we're so, we're so lost in sin. And I mean, he died for the people that crucified him so that they can have eternal life because he loved him so much and so now it's so different because it's just the reverse um i i, I want to do good and, and um be a disciple because of my love for him not because him not because i'm working or because i'm trying to win his favor or anything like that it's just because I, I have so much incredible love for him that it's just changed my heart and my life and it's and you you just you can't get that when you're in a system that's works based, you just you, you can't. And it's, I mean, you know, people can be born again in Christ with that, but it's very difficult because you just don't realize how much you need God yeah. when you're doing it on your own. So. And the Bible teaches us that he that believeth in him, he that believeth on him, shall have everlasting life. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Yes. And it that is just so. Uh, opposite of working yeah. for your own salvation. Yes. Jesus did it all for us. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, and that's a joy that I don't know that, uh, that the LDS will understand yeah. until they turn their lives over and, when they and do, actually trust God. And when they do, it'll be the best day of their life. I mean, it, it'll, it'll change them. And I mean, there's no going back after that. So, well, Nicole, you're a sweet young lady and I, I'm grateful that you and your husband, it's, that must have been a scary time for you, not yes. knowing what his reaction would be and that he was, gosh, being a return missionary. Uh, yeah, it was hard. So, uh, well, I praise God on your behalf, and yes. I'm sure you're grateful for mm. you yes. have, and your little daughter and everything. It's, mm. uh, and she enjoys church, does she? She goes oh, to yeah, church she with you? Oh, yeah, she claps her hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she does. So. Well, I, I appreciate <clears throat> uh, you and, and the walk that you're on. And I guess I wish I had <laughs> made those decisions and come to that knowledge back uh, 26 or many years ago that it would have uh, certainly changed my life. But I'm sure God worked with me the only way he could. Yeah. Yeah. He brought me to a knowledge late in life, and I... I love him and I trust him and I've mm -hmm. turned my life to him. And those of you out there, remember that you are choosing between the gospel of Jesus Christ, Joseph Smith and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Good night.